Welcome back to Fantabulous, where we draw handbags, we sketch and design accessories, and we have a lot of fun too. So today we are going to colorize our sketch that we did of the tote bag last time in our first video. So I already opened the document on Adobe Illustrator. It is a page uh, 8 by 11. 11 by 8 and I opened it with inches which I went through file setup document setup and I got gave myself a page of inches because I like inches I'm an American designer okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our image that we already scanned and we're going to place it on the document so let's get that image and uh, let's get it there aha there you are. So let's plop you down here. Now I usually scan my images humongous because I like a lot of detail, but you can scan them. You shouldn't really scan them too small. You don't want a situation where you wind up with pixelated weirdness. Okay, so I'm going to make this a smaller so it fits my my document. I'm going to go down to 20%. So. Okay, make it small, and it's going to disappear and go down to the bottom of the document. There it is. So I'm just going to grab him, our cute little sketch, and bring it on up. Come on, little doggy, you got to get onto the paper. Okay, once he's on the paper, okay, center him somewhat. Very nice, very nice indeed. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our object menu and we're going to go down 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 to image trace we're going to say make and expand and it's going to tell you that it's going to take a long time and blah 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 fine so we say okay and we wait the entire of you know whatever five seconds which is obviously way too long okay next we're going to grab our direct selects tool and we're going to get rid of the outer edge of our page where we scan because it's going to show up and any little tchotchkes and dirt that was on the screen of the scanner or your camera or whatever and now we have a beautiful pristine tote bag sketch so we're going to go now going to go shopping you and I are going to go shopping to the internet and the first place we went is to J&A Milton it's a leather place and I found this very nice swatch which I'm going to borrow do, 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 and I'm going to plop it over here this is pretty much the color if you remember of the original handles and I'm going to go shopping again and I'm going to look for a canvas which I actually found at India Mart which whatever ah, I'm gonna grab this lovely canvas I'm gonna plop it over here so now we have our wonderful swatches that we went shopping for is it nice to go shopping and comfort of your own home so now I'm going to do a select it and I'm going to go and make this smaller because right now as you can see it's pretty pretty big grain which is not gonna look too good on our back okay so we're going to grab that and make it as small as possible the other thing I like to do is to well, not I like to, I have to. I rasterize the image so that it will fit into the swatch box because somehow if you don't rasterize the image, it doesn't go in. So I have a few of them that I tried and I didn't like. So I'm going to make, uh, go here, where is it? There it is, rasterize. So I'm going to rasterize this little swatch here, make it flat, and then I'm going to travel over here, boop, 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 and I'm going to plop it on over here. And then I'm going to get rid of this swatch because I don't need it here. Now, the next one is this nice, lovely, delicious looking leather. And we're going to make it smaller because, again, the grain is a little aggressive for the handles. You want a nice grain, but you don't want it to be too overwhelming. So make it smaller. Okay, the next thing we do, being that this is in a square, we're going to go to image, crop, crop image, under objects. And we're going to make this a square. Do, 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 do. Uh, we're almost there, we're almost there. Yeah, okay, that's good enough. I'm going to move this down, and I'm going to hit my return button, and I have this lovely swatch now. So I'm going to plop this on down over here, and it's going to go down there, and I'm going to get rid of this swatch. Okay, now that we have swatches, we are ready to texturize. So I'm going to grab our direct select tool, and we're going to start picking up the portions of the bag that have 
the canvas. So I'm going to go to my swatch and just pick it. Now, you see we're having a little trouble here. I should have cropped this image as well. You see there's a white outline around it. So, okay, we have to go back to the drawing board. Okay, so we can actually, it's good to make mistakes. We can correct them. I'm going to go back and grab this same swatch. Oh, where'd he go? There's a swatch. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to do the same thing we did before, except this time we're going to crop the image so that we don't have that problem anymore. So I'm just going to grab, select this, and I'm just going to do, actually, I don't need the regular selection tool, and I'm going to, again, make it smaller. Make it smaller until I have a grain and a weave that looks normal for the size of the bag. You don't want it to be too gross. Okay, so I think maybe even smaller than that. Okay, so we're going to do crop image. There we go. And we're going to go down do, 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 and make it a complete square. Because if not, you're going to wind up with a weird cropped image. Okay, so I'm going to move it to the middle just to make sure that we are rid of any borders that happened before. So we're going to hit that. Very good. And now I'm going to take this and put it down here. Oh, wait a minute. It's not going to go because I need to rasterize it first. So I'm going to say rasterize, flatten that image, make it flat, flat, flat. It really doesn't affect the quality that much, so you don't have to worry. Ah, there. So we're going to get rid of this swatch. And now we're going to touch this. I'm going to take the direct select tool. I'm going to touch the panel that we didn't like. And we're going to see how this comes out. Ah, much nicer. Um, I'm thinking I want to do this a little bit smaller. I think it needs to be about maybe 20% smaller, the grain, because it's still a little aggressive. So I'm going to take that, go to the Scale tool, and I'm going to say Transform Patterns, but not Transform Objects. And I'm going to say OK and see how that looks. Ah, much nicer. OK. So next one, we're going to grab our Direct Select tool, and we're going to grab all the pieces that are needing this color. Uh, okay, so we're going to grab those and we're going to do this. And then we're going to zoom in and get all the little details because we want everything to be nice and filled in. Like, for example, this spot over here. Oop. Come on, little guy. All right, so I'm going to grab and color him in. And let's go over here. I'm going to do the same thing. The interior lip or cuff or collar, sometimes it's called, is, of the bag was also, in the original, was uh, also in self-material. That means it was made with the same material. So here, we're going to get the edging. It was a turned-in edge, which means it just turned in. It has no raw edges, which you can't really do on canvas. You can only do raw edges on leather and PVC. Okay, so... Now we have our bag is a lovely canvas gray bag, just like the original. Now we're going to do the handles, which was in leather, or actually it was fake leather, but whatever. And we're going to grab all of our areas of the bag handle that was made in this leather, and we're going to try our swatch and see how that looks. Oh, voila, very nice. Now let me go back, and we're going to take a look. Maybe, maybe, maybe we're going to say zap, and we're going to do it again. And I think what I want to do is the texture still looks a little bit too big. I'm going to go down 20%. Again, we're going to only do transform patterns. So we can only transform the pattern and not the size of the actual shape. So we're going to say OK. And it got a little smaller, and I think that's, I think that's preferable. OK. So now, what was the last detail this bag had? The edge paint. Now, the edge paint was like a teensy bit darker. It tends to have some gloss to it. That's what they like. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our swatch library and see what we have that would look good. Gems and Jewels isn't working. The metallics are a little aggressive. Although, actually, the copper might look nice. Pastel's not going to work. Skin tone might work. So let's try the... Let's just do an experimentation. We're going to grab our little edging here, just a little piece of it to see. And I'm going to put in this copper, or actually it's bronze, and see how it looks. Mm, maybe a little aggressive. So let's go to our skin palette. 
and see about that. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna grab these two again, just to see. I think probably this is going to be okay. I'm trying to find a good match. Something with a little life to it. Let's see. Um, mm, too pink. I'm gonna say no, but I'll do it again. I think we need something with a little more of a yellowish tone. Let's see. Mm. That's better. I think though we can do even better. Let's see. What's this? Metal, no. Wood, no. Brick and stone. Hmm. Let's try this one over here. Ah, okay, so we found something in brick and stone that gives us a little bit of a kind of a glossy look without being too aggressively shiny. Sometimes you want that. When you're doing something like in a patent leather, you want to get gloss, gloss, gloss. But if you're doing something that's a little less shiny, you want a little bit of gloss, but not too much. Okay, so now let's go back and look at what we did. Okay, go back to 100%. Uh-huh. So you can actually stop right here and say, I'm done. However, some people might find this looking a little flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add shadows and areas that are behind like the back handle, the interior lip, and maybe a little bit to the side. So what we usually do, I do, is I imagine some magic light over here. And then I imagine where the shadows would fall on the bag. So the first obvious place where that would happen would be on the under handle, well, the back handle and the lip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this shift and I'm gonna grab all of these and I'm going to say copy paste. Oh, now what I'm gonna do is, actually I have to do a better job of that. That didn't work too well. I'm going to grab these spots and if you're having trouble grabbing, it's always a good idea to just go in and uh, zoom in more. Okay, so now we're going to say copy and paste. Again, it didn't work too well. All right, so let me go and zoom in because we really would like to get this done today. Okay, now we're in there. Okay, so now we're going to grab the shapes that we want to color darker. Okay, let's see. We can grab each one at a time or two at a time. So I'm going to step in here and just go copy, paste. Now I have this shape here and I'm going to go to my fades and shadows and I'm going to do this. Now I have a faded shadow that I'm going to put back on top. Now I do a lot of layering, well not a lot of layering, but I do some layering and I tend to not use the layering tool which is, I don't know. The thing is I don't do more than two or three layers so I find it like a waste of time to make too many layers. Okay, so I think I want to try a different one. I'm going to do this one. Okay. This is going to give us a more three-dimensional look to our bag. So again, I grab the next one. I do copy paste. And there's our little shape over there. As you can see it, I'm going to go back to the same one I used before because it seemed to work pretty well. And I can actually go down here and make it a little darker because I want to make it a little darker. A little more there. Okay. That's fine. So I'm going to grab that and plop it down here and make a little layer there. Okay. Now, very nice. So we're going to do the next one. You see any spots that you want to color in? You could just grab them and small spots sometimes happens with, okay, you just color them in gray. Okay, here I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab and grab and grab, and I'm going to say copy, paste, and I have all my shapes here. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to grab my tool over here. I'm going to make it a little bit darker because it's kind of like out of the light somewhat, and I'm going to put that, oops, no. I'm going to put that in where it's supposed to go on top. There, like this. <laughs> I'm going to put it back here, and now you will see when we turn back, right now it's hard to tell because we're on top of it, but you see now we have this illusion of like 
space. You know, it's, it looks a little darker. We're going to do the same thing over to the back handle. So again, we're going to go zoom in, zoom in. Okay, we're at 300%, that's good. And I'm going to grab this one, okay. Shift, and I'm going to grab this one. And, and hopefully, okay, and I'm going to try to grab this one. And I'm going to say copy and paste. That oh, didn't work. Let's zoom in a titch more, just a titch. More. Okay, let's see. So I'm gonna grab this one. And I'm grab this shape over here. And I'm going to grab this shape up here. And heck, why not? I'll try to grab this one too. Okay, so I'm gonna grab all of them and say copy, paste. And now I have these little shapes that are going to be shadowed now. So I'm going to try different shadow. Mm, I think I'm gonna have to use the same one I used before. Nah, if it's not doing what you want, you could just go ahead and do a gray tone if you want a more even shadow. And then you go to opacity over here and you're gonna go down a little bit like this. Let's go down to, I don't know, now 16% is too little. Let's do like 30 something, 40%. Okay, I'm gonna grab all our pieces and just grab them. Hello, grab them and uh, put them back. And that should make us look a little bit more recessed and darker. So I can do that again. I think I want to do it even darker. Let's go to 50 something percent, 53, 50, whatever, 54%, why not? Nice number there. Okay, so we're going to put this back and we're going to put this right where it's supposed to be. There we go. And let's see what it looks like. Okay, does it make it look a little bit more... In the background, yes, it does. Okay, so we're successfully done that. Um, now the body of the bag looks really flat. <laughs> okay, now what do we do? So I'm going to imagine where a shadow would find itself on this bag. So because the light we set is up someplace up here on the top right-hand corner, someplace around here, I am going to imagine that we're going to have a shape that goes like around here because of the gusset, oops, and down around to the bottom of the bag. You can even do some shadowing in this wrinkle here, but let's try that. Okay, so let's go, and we're going to grab our drawing tool. Hello, Mr. Drawing Tool. We're gonna to grab our pen tool, and we're going to go I'm going to make ourselves a little shadow. We don't want to grab any, um, any, uh, okay. One thing we want to do is like get rid of a fill because that's going to be really confusing. Okay. So, okay. I'm going to do that again. And we're going to just give ourselves, oh, how'd that happen? All right. No matter. We'll put it back. Mm. Opacity back to 50. So, <laughs> okay, let's go back. I don't know how that happened, but we're going to fix it. So we're going to go to 300% and we're going to grab our things and go back. I don't know, sometimes my computer jumps the gun, but that's okay. All right, so okay, let's move this down. Okay, all right, so. Actually, I just, it's good because I just saw that I missed this spot here. I missed a couple of spots here that need shadowing. So I'm just going to actually shadow them quickly with gray because I don't have time. Okay, let's just do this. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so back to our shadows. Okay, so let's zoom out. This is a little too big. So we'll go down to 200 and whatever. We'll go down to 200%. Okay, so let's grab our pen tool again. I don't know what happened before, but we're going to, going to do our, just gonna go down. Okay, now it's giving me this. All right, let me get the fill out of here because it's getting a little confusing to me. I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, and back to this. Okay, so I'm going to just, quickly make a little outline here and we're going to imagine where 
If I was a shadow, where would I be? Okay. All right, so I would say I'd be something like this. Being that the shadow is going to kind of curve around, maybe even go into this wrinkle over here, I'm going to try to see if that works. I'm going to go there, and then I'm going to go up here, and then I'm going to make a little loop here, and then I'm going to go down there. And then maybe up here, I don't know. You want to be artsy about it, but you don't want to be too artsy. Okay, so now the rest of the bag is going to start to come out of shadow because that's what happens. I mean, you're working with a piece of material that has certain qualities. Okay, so let's see. So now I have this shape that I'm hoping looks okay. We can always play with it. So I'm going to get myself a gray on it. Now it looks, wow, that's pretty aggressive. Actually, you can even do darker gray. And I'm going to go to my opacity and I'm going to say, oh, too dark. I want a little bit less. I want to show a shadow, but I don't want it to be there. Okay, let's see. So let's step back. Okay, this is good. Let's step back and get rid of that. Okay, and see what we came up with. Now, okay, now we have a little bit more of a kind of a shadowy kind of look. I'm not crazy about it. I think I want to change the look, the uh, first the shapes on this one, I think needs to go this way more. Okay, that's fine. Now, I'm not crazy about the way the shadow is sitting. I think I want to move the shadow a little bit this way. And I also want to use an actual shadow layer. So I'm actually going to go to the fade black. And I'm going to hit that there. Why is this not working? Okay. Cancel that. What's going on here? Okay. So the fill is telling me it's a faded black, but it doesn't look good. Okay. Let's go back to our opacity. What's going on here? The fade is not working too well. Let me see. Come on, what's going on? Okay, so we got our fade here. Let's try again. Let's grab the opacity. It's, let's go to, let's get a little bit darker. Now, I think we could do better. Let's do a little bit more of a fade like that. Okay, now it's a less of a fade. And now we're going to get the opacity a little bit darker. Okay, okay. Now, a fun thing we can do is we can give it an angle. We want to maybe, let's just play around with the angle. Mm, no, it's not working too well. There, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the other way. I'm gonna go 60%. Yeah, it's a little bit better, but I think we need less. Let's try 45%. Okay, so we're at a 45% angle. I'm gonna make it a little darker there. And now the opacity, I think we can reduce it. Okay, so so now we have our little tote bag with some shadow. Uh, you can play with the shadow. You can drag it over there, maybe pull this down a little bit. Wherever you imagine the, f the fabric is actually going to form shadows, that's what you're doing. Now you can also play with different sh uh, fades and... Uh, to see how that goes. You see this a lighter fade, a darker fade, an even darker fade. And you can also play with opacity if you want to make the fade restricted. You can do that with the, your tools and then go up on opacity because then it's going to look a little different. Okay, so now we have a bag, a shaded bag, and you can save it and work with it. Uh, you can also do different, um, smaller shadows as much as you want. Uh, you can move this, for example, let's move this shadow piece that we did here, and we can do an extra shadow here. Let's go to our direct select tool. These areas here, we can grab them and copy them. And, I don't know. What happened there? I'm going to do that. Okay, and then we're going to use the same shadow, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the back. 
under the other shadow and that's going to make it a layered shadow. It's going to look nicer. It might be a little bit too dark there, so we're going to reduce opacity on that. I'll go back, okay, there you go. And it should layer it, so let's go and take this. Okay, grab you and put you back where you were. Okay, so now we have a bag with some layered shadows and it's a pretty much a copy of our original and I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed and uh, we'll try next time to do some other styles. If you want to suggest a style, please put it in the comment box. If you have a style that you like, send the picture uh, or a link to something that you want to draw. Okay, uh, hope to see you soon. Thanks, bye.